Greetings and welcome back to Lucas Brews. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Mr. Craft 172nd Focke-Wulf 190D. We'll be having a look at how this one goes together and I'll be doing a little review. And I've brought for myself two identical tooling kits. Uh, this one's got uh, Rudal decals and this one's got the Mikalski decals. So um, the only difference will be the schemes in these two kits, otherwise they're pretty much identical. So uh, let's get into it. The box contains three sprues moulded in grey with a subtle graininess and a set of two types of clear canopies. The parts feature minimal detail, all recessed, with a basic shape to represent a seat being the only interior details. Overall, for a first look, the kit clearly lacks a fair bit of detailing but is otherwise okay. The decals were, on the other hand, awful, and I'll talk more about them later, but overall they seem to be weirdly laid out and coloured and appeared to have no common stencil markings despite the instructions suggesting they existed. I began assembly by cutting out the fuselage halves and gluing in the only part included for the cockpit, a basic seat. I made small improvements however by using some styrene sheets to create sidewall details and an instrument panel and also using some rubber insulated florist wire to create a joystick for the pilot. This was only rudimentary but it helped a lot with making some basic interior detail. I assembled the propeller, which spins, while I let the cockpit dry, and then I cut out and glued the wing halves together. The fit for the wings was pretty good. I simply used some bulldog clips to hold them in place while they bonded. While the wings dried, I also assembled the landing gear struts. I added some extra copper wire to add brake lines and other cables, and later I also added some thicker wire to make cannons for the wheel well, which had no detail. I painted the interior with two coats of Tamiya XF24 dark grey and the wheel wells and undercarriage details in two coats of Tamiya XF32 RLM grey before adding on the details for the cockpit and landing gear. I used Tamiya XF3 flat yellow, XF8 flat blue and XF7 flat red to paint a few instruments onto the FW190's panel that I scratch built. After those colours dried, I then brushed some Tamiya XF1 flat black dots on to represent the dials. I painted some of the landing gear struts in flat aluminium while the cockpit details dried and added a few yellow details before slightly dabbing some Tamiya XF2 flat white onto the black dots in the cockpit to finish off the instruments. Following this, I glued the two fuselage halves together. The fit for them was really good. After those parts had bonded, I sanded the joint seams down with a nail file before gluing an upper section of the cowling and the front part of the cowling and radiator in place. These parts were a bit tricky because the instructions weren't clear and the fit of the parts was pretty bad. The wings proved less of an issue and bonded very well to the fuselage halves with basically no gap. After leaving the parts to dry for a bit, I then put on the horizontal stabilizers, which didn't actually seem to fit into their slots, so I had to cut the joining piece off and sand them down before gluing them to the model. I glued the landing gear doors in place and then gave the wheels a little bit of a clean up. They, much like the front cowling, didn't appear to be very accurate and their tread pattern was very weird. After some light sanding to reduce the pattern, I then glued them in place. I decided to leave out a pin wash and also leave the canopy off and instead do extra details later. I paint a little bit of red for the headrest of the pilot and then move on to painting. I use the AK Interactive Generation 3 water-based acrylic paints for any German markings and colours because the AK paints tend to be slightly better in quality and they also use the German colour codes rather than the more generic Tamiya ones. Since they come in bottles, I squeeze some of my first colour, RLM 76 Variation 1, into a small takeaway cup and then apply it to the model in two thin coats on the underside of the aircraft based on the colour scheme I chose. I always apply the lightest colour first and apply it with a large brush in the direction of the airflow to help reduce brush strokes and to create a realistic and uniform layer of paint. I then began to work on the upper surface of the aircraft with the lightest of the two more grey colours, RLM 75. The AK paints are also pretty thin and flow very well so I find that I don't need to water them down. I just make sure to give the paint a good shake and mix it into the pouring pot and that helps create a more uniform layer. As you can see, the first coat of paint tends to be very thin, almost translucent, but it's best to build up in layers rather than do it all at once and then end up with a thick layer of paint that shows brush strokes and looks really unrealistic at a small scale. 
After the two coats of RLM 75, I then do a follow-up coat of RLM 76 on the underside. This is not only to finish off the RLM 76, but also to neaten up any overlap that might have accidentally occurred with the previous layer. Next, I create the camouflage patterns using the darker RLM 74. With German camouflage, it tends to be very angular, so you could use masking tape. However, I like to just carefully outline the shapes for the camouflage with the brush and then fill them in, trying to apply the paint in thin coats and in the same direction as much as possible. I also carefully paint the frames of the canopy with two layers of RLM 74 with a very fine brush. The camouflage scheme I chose had what a lot of other German aircraft often had, which was known as modelling, where paint would be applied usually with an airbrush on the side to create almost cloud-like splatters. To recreate this with a brush in small scale, there's a special little trick. I simply get a brush and make sure the paint is not too thick and wet by scraping the excess off, and then I dab a bunch of splatters with both RLM 75 and RLM 74 along the areas where the modelling would have been. The key at this stage is to keep the paint thin and mostly dry on the brush and apply it in a very random fashion. While I wait for the splatters to dry, I do another neaten up of RLM 75 and RLM 74 on the upper surface of the aircraft before getting out some flat black to paint the propellers, the spinner, the tail wheel and also the main set of landing gear. With the tail wheel, I carefully paint it with a fine brush, taking care not to paint the struts. And now that the modelling is dry, it's time for the secret trick. I get a little bit of RLM 76 and apply it in a very thin layer all over the sections I modelled. This softens the effect and makes it look more like it was airbrushed on, making it more realistic. Once the modelling had been finished, I then painted another coat of flat black onto the spinner and landing gear, and then it was time to add the squadron markings. Since I'd looked at the decals and decided they didn't look too good, I decided to paint the bands on the back of the aircraft using paint. I simply painted the white and black stripes on the fuselage using Tamiya paints by thinning them with a little bit of water and then applying them as neatly as possible with a relatively large brush to reduce brush strokes. I then painted the machine guns and pedo tube using flat aluminium and neatened up the struts for the landing gear before painting the exhausts a coat of X31 titanium gold. The scheme had another set of decals that went around the exhaust, but I decided to paint them by hand instead. I simply used XF1 and a fine brush to apply the markings around the exhaust after they dried. I also painted the white spiral on the spinner of the aircraft by simply painting a circular line that wrapped around the spinner using a very fine brush and some white paint. Next came the decals, which were by far the worst part of this kit. They were very flaky and even when gently moved with a paintbrush after being in water they would sometimes tear. I stuck them in water and then applied some water where I wanted the decal to go and then I slid them off the transfer paper. As you can see a lot of them folded up and some tore and even disintegrated. Eventually I got all the ones I needed on or found some spares and then I applied the Tamiya decal adhesive onto them and left the decals for a day to properly conform to the model. The next day, I began the weathering process. First, I got some Tamiya XF16 flat aluminium and using a very fine brush, I dabbed some lightly on areas where paint was most likely to be chipped. Based on reference photos, it occurs mostly on parts exposed to the airflow in flight, such as the leading edges of the wings, propeller, the spinner, the front of the cowling, on the leading edges of the tail and elevators, as well as on walkways from the pilot getting in and out, the landing gear doors, and around the wheel well and the corners of various hatches and panels that engineers might bump and scrape. Once all the metal chipping had been applied and left to dry, I then watered down some flat black so it would flow more into the recessed panel lines, and then I dabbed it onto the barrels of the cannons to create gun smoke, on the radiator to highlight depth and also create some leaks, leading away from the exhaust in kind of dabbed streaks to create the illusion of exhaust smoke, and I also applied some along the edge of the control surfaces and then used a sponge or my finger to drag it back and create the effect of leaks and streaks. The final thing I did after this was to repaint the wheel wells a coat of RLM grey and with that the model was completed. And here we can see the finished model kit. So this one was from Jagdgeschwader 26 from the Rudel kit. 
Uh, and the second one I'll show you in a minute uh, is also from the same group, but it's from the Mikalski kit. So a different set of decals. So I'll start off with the pros for this kit. To start off with, it's uh, very cheap, but um, it's not much cheaper than the Airfix kits um, in their 170 second range, but it is still slightly cheaper. Uh, there's also quite a large number of markings. I'll show the uh, decal instructions in a moment, but there are a fair few different markings from different squadrons. And uh, there's a few other kits of the 190D that will include other instruction, um, other schemes. So uh, there's that. Uh, and now for the cons, and I'm afraid there's quite a lot of them, because I'll be brutally honest, I don't think this is a very good kit. Now, to start off with, the quality of the decals is very poor. Uh, you can still see some of the marks where these decals have actually cracked. Um, they haven't silvered too badly, which is pretty good. Um, I haven't done anything to make them less susceptible to that, so they've held up to that test pretty good, but as you can see, they're just, they're too delicate. They they broke up, um, and I didn't bother using the decals for that because I didn't think they were going to be very good, so I think I dodged a bullet on that one. Um, the other issue I had with the decals was that there appeared to be some missing, and uh, well, since I had two FW-190s, I thought, well, I can figure that out for sure. Um, both of them appear to be missing the common stencils, despite the fact that in the instructions they show where to put them. So you can have a look at the instructions for this one, and you'll see that there are things, uh, some markings around the uh, engine cowling, the fuel symbols for the aircraft, and all the common stencils are included on the decal sheet, including things like markings for uh, the wings. I'll uh, get that page open. So you can see there should be a fair few more decals, but if you have a rewind of the video, you'll see there were none included. And that goes also for the second 190, which I'll bring here. So this one's a different scheme, but otherwise they're identical tooling. So um, yeah, the decals were a pretty big disappointment. And the same issues are on these ones. So you can see there's cracks there where I've had to refit them. Uh, this aircraft I painted over the um, markings based on reference photos. So that was a different aircraft. So that's okay. Um, Sorry, I didn't glue the canopies on because I wanted to show the cockpit details as well, uh, or lack thereof. So that's the other issue I had with this kit. Uh, the details are not great. Uh, the recess panel lines are nice, um, but uh, personally I think the proportions are a little bit weird, especially around the cowling. Um, the details are pretty poor, except on the front, and the cockpit windshield doesn't seem to fit very flush into the model. You could try sanding it down further, but it's a bit awkward and it's very thick. So the canopy wasn't really good and it doesn't appear to be in the correct shape. Uh, cockpit details were pretty appalling. All it came with was that seat. Uh, you can see that very crude instrument panel. That's something I added in myself, just with the polystyrene sheets. And you can see the control column I added that one in myself as well. Uh, the landing gear is not awful, but the landing gear bays do leave a little bit to be desired. Um, and I've added a few extra cables there too. So I've made a few modifications to try and make it slightly better, but overall it's uh, not a particularly great model. So my conclusion would be, if you want to get a decent but cheap FW190, definitely go with the Airfix one, and it's worlds apart in terms of the detail, especially for the interior. Uh, and the undercarriage there. And just overall, I think the Airfix one has a much better shape and it's much better designed to actually be built. Uh, I didn't have any of the issues I did with these, like with the elevators not fitting correctly. So the Airfix kit is a much better one. The other alternative, if you want a really good FW190, would be the IBG kit. And that's got a lot more surface detail. Uh, you've got the individual rivets, you've got your own engine that comes with it separate. So. That is a much better kit, so I would go down that route personally next time. Uh, however, if you, for whatever reason, like uh, I wanted a few aircraft for animations in the future, so I wanted to get a fair few relatively cheap, and I thought I'd give these guys a try, but I probably won't be uh, buying any more kits from them in the future after this one. But um, if you do need an awful lot of FW190Ds and they don't have to be perfect, you just need a ton of them for whatever reason, then uh, 
I suppose Mr. Craft's not too bad, but otherwise I would go with the Airfix or the IBG one any day. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, a comment, or subscribe. And a shout out to our wonderful patrons, Archie Palmer, Emo, Joan Moss, and J&K Jones. You guys have been absolutely wonderful uh, supporting this channel, so I'm very grateful to have you guys around. And um, stay tuned for the next few videos. We'll have the two Airfix and AZ model Spitfires coming out shortly, and a couple of other little ones that are in the works. So thank you very much. And until the next one, model on.